Hi, this is Dr. Kang's scuba diving story. Today's story is about diving and nosebleed. Um, I have told you uh, several times already that in Korea we have a dive, uh, diveweb.co.kr. This is a diving exclusive site. And in there I have been doing this dive medicine Q&A. And yesterday I checked with nosebleed and uh, I found 82 uh, questions and answers there. Which means there's quite a, quite a number of uh, nosebleed related to diving. So uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, what happens during diving and why the nosebleed. Uh, in medical book, uh, nosebleed is not that common as epistaxis. I don't know why uh, so difficult words. Uh, in Korea, we have the same problem. We have a uh, easy nosebleed, and then there's some uh, some other expression, and it's not uh, easy to understand. Okay, uh, this nosebleed means uh, bleeding from the nose related to diving. That can be just a mechanical bleeding, uh, which is most common. Anybody can uh, suffer nosebleed, so why not divers? And there's a nosebleed uh, we can expect during diving, right after diving and there are even some delayed uh, nosebleed. So we'll take a look at what about diving after nosebleed and um, is there any way we can prevent the nosebleed? Yes or not. Um, nosebleed <coughs> in most cases it is a mechanical bleeding from the nose and there can be bleeding from other sides, but almost all those bleed comes from uh, nasal septum. And in the nasal septum, let me uh, change to a bigger slide. <coughs> uh, this nasal septum has an area here. Can you see it? Yes called the litter's area. There's a certain small area that Dr. Litter found. And in that area is a blood plexus, I'm sorry, blood vessel plexus. It's called the kisser bars plexus. And it's only like, it's about here, and it's about one to two centimeter from the <coughs> nostril. So it's pre pretty close to the nostril. And this is the litter's area and the plexus is called the Kisserbass plexus. And there are so many arteries and veins that gather around here. So, so much bleeding here. Kids, they sleep and they might just use their finger to poke their nose, then uh, bleeding start, and then uh, he or she will come to uh, you and say, Mom, I'm bleeding. You know. This is mechanical uh, bleeding, so can be stopped pretty easily. Usually kids bleed, you come to hospital and the bleeding has already stopped. And Doctors can look, in, uh, look into it and we can see some uh, tip of blood vessels protruding out of the litter's area. We can either coagulate it with uh, electricity or laser, sometimes chemical burn to the blood vessel, but those can cause further bleeding if not done right. So it's not I don't recommend that. There's other way of uh, stopping the bleeding. So, okay. Uh, 
So cause is a nosebleed. It's a mechanical injury. Uh, it's usually from pinching your nose. And if you have any problem with the equalization, you will go. <coughs> you shake it up and you touch, um, irritate the Kesselbach's plexus. Then the bleeding start. And also pressure change from outside to inside can cause bleeding. Uh, there are bleeding during and the right after diving. So mostly bleeding will stop spontaneously. During diving, it's mostly mechanical diving and sinus squeeze. So when we talk about diving and nosebleed, we mostly focus on the sinus squeeze. But in fact, the mechanical bleeding is far more frequent than nosebleed. I'm sorry, sinus squeeze. Uh, so about the sinus squeeze, I will prepare another uh, slide. Right after diving, it's also from mechanical nosebleed. Uh, Middle squeeze can also cause bleeding and it will begin to come out through the ET eustachian tube. And then we have sinus squeeze. So what is sinus squeeze? It's a barotrauma. Um, one thing we have to remember, this barotrauma of peronatal sinuses, sometimes they are not painful. Most of the time they are painful. But there are unpainful bleeding too. So if it bleeds heavily after, right after diving, probably uh, it's coming from either septum or the sinus. Septum you can actually see uh, fairly easy, but sinus you will never see. But from the hospital we can use an endoscope and check the middle meters, then bleeding actually comes from maxillary sinus. We can see that. Um, bleeding can accumulate in the, ma uh, in the mask when the bleeding comes to the anterior area, but there are bleeding that goes to the posterior uh, nasal cavity that we call coana. Um, people say, we, I have a drip in my nose or post major trip. Uh, blood often pull in the sinus. Any blood pulling somewhere invites infection. And if you don't take care of the bleeding uh, pulled inside the sinus, it's very likely that you may get acute sinusitis. Especially after diving and you drink a lot of um, liquor, uh, it's very likely. So it's not a good idea. There are delayed bleeding. You finished the diving three days ago, but still you have uh, some blood coming out of your nose. So it's mostly sinus squeeze. Blood pulls in here and will come out little by little also from the middle ear, little by little. And in this case, it's more of some thick uh, blood, not really, you know, red bleeding, but it's some uh, pinkish uh, discharge coming out. It's, um, they are coming out through the natural ostium of the sinus or a second tube of the middle ear. So this can last up to a week, uh, sometimes even longer than that. Uh, if you have a complicated sinusitis, then it's bloody discharge with your um, laser discharge, sputum. You know? So then you can usually tell. You also have other symptoms of uh, acute sinusitis too. So. You can usually tell that, oh, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, so, if you, uh, if you had a nosebleed 
and you still have three more days of uh, labor board, what should I do? Um, as a matter of fact, if you had whatever bleeding, like mechanical, you know, simple nosebleed, but it is recommended that you wait for at least two to three days so that the kissel bar plex plexus find its way back into the submucosa of litter's area. Um, because if you squeeze your nose again, that will come back to bleeding. Uh, what about myself? I don't think I can wait this long, but this is the recommendation. So, even if, uh, even if it bleeds, mechanical bleeding is really not really serious. If you have delayed bleeding, you have to wait three days minimum to until um, you have to wait three days after the bleeding uh, completely stops so that you can avoid the further um, injury to your sinus. This also is very difficult when you paid a lot of money and uh, you are on a liver board in the Red Sea, very far away from whatever cities, you know. But it is recommended to wait and not dive. Uh, of course, if you want to dive after lungs bleed, you don't have sinusitis, or rhinitis, or otitis media kind of signs and symptoms. If you have those, you cannot dive anyway. So let's see how we can prevent. Uh, when you have cold, when you have uh, acute rhinitis, blocked nose, runny nose, sneezing, and paranormal sinusitis, you should never dive. If you have any problem with equalization, you should not dive. I also uh, taught a lot of divers and if this is the last day of last dive of my student, and if my student cannot go down, he cannot finish the open order dive course. But we don't know when we can get together for open order training dive. In this case, instructors get tempted to pull the student down. Uh, this can this can make you lose your student forever. So you have to be patient. If student have any problem with equalization and if he has any nosebleed problem, you have to stop the dive and abort, abort, <coughs> abort right there. Uh, slow uh, gentle descent with frequent equalization you can prevent the nosebleed. You can prevent the squeeze anywhere. So if you have any uh, question and if you have not seen uh, this uh, YouTube video, uh, please check uh, equalization Dr. Kong Scuba Diving Stories and you will get more information. So today I talked about diving and nosebleed. Um, we really suffer this quite often. So let's be uh, careful, let's uh, help our buddy, well, our student too. Thank you very much for your attention and there is Dr. Kang's scuba diving stories.